Hey lads, welcome to a boss healing guide for Kokia Blaze Hoof, which is the second boss in Ruby Life Pools. We are at a plus 20 tyrannical key. As you can guess from the footage, we already wiped on this boss, but you can still time the key, nevertheless. And this uh, boss fight could be a little bit harder because there's a lot of overlapping mechanics, but as long as you know uh, what happens and when it happens, you should have no problem healing to that boss. The most important thing in this fight is to know that she's always going to cast the Ritual of Blaze Binding that you see on the screen right now. It's going to be followed by two Molten Boulders, not one, not three, two Molten Boulders, and then she's going to cast the Ritual again. This is extremely important because your positioning in this fight will make it either impossible to go through or very easy at the end. And knowing which mechanic follows is also very important so you know where to stand. She always starts the fight with the ritual which means that you want to stand in the open area and spawn the fire elemental there. You can see the big fire patch on the ground, this is where the elemental is going to appear in 5 seconds and of course once you see that you need to move out of it, usually you want to run towards the boss. And then the fun starts. So the first thing I do is I cast my healing rain on top of the elemental because the melee is going to go and smack them. Then I'm watching my position. I know that next we're going to the upper right hand side of the map, this is where we clear the trash, so this is where we're going to kite the boss. So I am baiting the boulder to go towards the uh, next boss area pretty much, uh, because the boulder leaves fire trail on the ground which is not going to disappear and if you stand on it you get a nasty dot that uh, it's healable through but that generally you don't want to do that. At the same time, the elemental is already casting the Inferno, which is unavoidable damage that is going to hit everybody in your party, and basically you have to top them up, you have to heal them up so they survive it. So move away from the boulder and start casting heals immediately, because the Inferno hits hard, but then it also leaves a dot on everybody. So it's not imperative to top everybody up to full health, but you need to pump in enough kills into them so they survive the dot. Usually you can get one or two casts in and then you have to move out of the big fire circle which happens when the elemental dies and explodes. So while running away, you can just uh, use the riptides to spread them out and help you with the healing. Once you're confident that everybody's going to survive the dot, turn all of your attention towards the tank because the boss is casting the next mechanic which is called the Searing Blows. This deals heavy damage to the tank, they need to be prepared for it, they need to mitigate some of the damage but they will also need some healing from you in order to survive it. As you can see I'm already popping my ancestral guidance here and I have a cloud burst rolling which is going to help me significantly towards the end of this rotation. And after you survive all of this, you get a little bit of breathing room where you need to top everybody up because all of this is going to repeat in just a second. At the same time, you need to be aware that the next mechanic is going to be the boulder, so what you want to do is stand as close to the fire poop as possible and bait the boulder towards the sides. Do not stand where you're going to go next because if the boulder is baited there, there's going to be a fire patch on the ground and it's going to be very hard to maneuver the boss around it. And from here on, it's basically rinse and repeat. The next thing she's going to do is summon another elemental. And here you want to stand a little bit away from the fire patches on the ground. Bait the elemental there and then perfectly you would have space between the fire patches and uh, the elemental. So you can bait the next boulder over there. Over here I'm baiting to the side but I already casted my cloud burst and my healing rain. And luckily the boulder goes uh, back to the side. But I'm already precasting my chain heal because you can see that the Inferno is coming and shortly after she's going to do the Searing Blows which is going to smack the tank. So try to make everybody survive the dot, then try to make sure that your tank survives, run out of the burnout from the Fire Elemental and then bait the next boulder to the sides. For this rotation I just pop my healing tight to help me uh, top everybody a little bit faster and then it's rinse and repeat. So we're baiting here the elemental a little bit far from the fire patches on the ground, then it's going to summon, we're baiting the boulder back to where we came from, healing through the inferno, healing through the searing blows that the tank is going to get right now and then move out from the fire patch on the ground. As you can see, I'm trying to keep my healing rain on top of the elemental at all times, so my chain heals actually help me and uh, heal the party for a little bit more. And the other useful spell that I just casted is downpour, because usually you are stacked on top of each other during this fight, so you can hit all five party members with that spell. 
Now, on the previous rotation, I didn't have to move that much, so I managed to heal everybody without additional cooldowns. But, uh, in here, as you can see, everybody's going to drop very, very low, so uh, I just decided to uh, pop my Ascendants here and top everybody up before the next set of mechanics comes up. The Spirit Link is also something that I'm saving in case my tank gets into uh, much trouble from the Syrian Blows. And one other thing to note is that the boulder actually explodes once it hits something. So if you're baiting close to a wall, make sure to move away from there because the explosion will one-shot you if you're inside of the radius. As you can see over here, the boss is already pretty low. I have my Ancestral Guidance back up, so this uh, is a cooldown that uh, comes back for the end of the fight. And the other thing that I didn't mention is that after the Inferno is cast, the Elemental casts a Roaring Blaze. This one is interruptible, and if it goes off, it's heavy AoE with damage. So you have to make sure that this is actually interrupted at all costs. There's nothing else to interrupt in the fight, so usually your team member should be responsible for that, so you can just heal. But keep in mind that at the very end, you might decide not to kill the last elemental, but just burn down the boss. It's imperative that at that point of the fight, the elemental is interrupted at all costs. Now at the end, here's a little bit of an extra footage from our wipe, which uh, I think could be used to learn something. First the tank died, which I guess it's bad on both uh, his and mine side. We could have done uh, better to save him. But then over here, we baited the boulder towards the side. As you can see first, there is no graphic showing where the boulder is going to go. And then, once spawned, the boulder actually hits the curb and kills us all. So the conclusion, try to bait back to the path where you came from, so uh, you don't get into that situation. Although I really think that uh, Blizzard should just fix that, because uh, it's just not fair. The boss is hard enough as is, um, on top of you being killed by a curb that's uh, basically not there on the map. If all goes well though, you should have lust for the pool of this boss, so it should die a little bit quicker, and uh, you would have to go through less healing and less uh, cooldowns. Uh, I am famous for holding on my SLT, I could have used the spirit link there just to uh, either help the tank or reduce the damage taken. You should definitely do that and play better than uh, I did, but as you can see we did manage to get the kill. The cloud burst is really useful because you can cast it at the start of uh, each set of mechanics and it will just pop at the end to help you top everybody up. The talents that I used are right now on the screen, so uh, feel free to steal this build. I have more boss guides prepared to come up on the channel, feel free to subscribe for that. Next up is the last boss in uh, Ruby Life Pools, so I'll see you in that video, but until then, take care, happy healing and happy king.